And then a little more famous um, is the ginseng, American ginseng. I have no explanation for why American ginseng is outrageously popular in China, and here we want Chinese ginseng. Yeah. <laughs> and, we, and here we have we have a ginseng growth up in our woods, although we don't want everybody to go harvest it necessarily, but there's a ginseng everywhere. There's a ginseng in California, there's a ginseng on the East Coast, but because of its popularity in China, I checked this morning, there's still people going to jail, going to prison for um, poaching ginseng off of parklands as a gospel. <laughs> so ginseng poachers are still getting into trouble. Um, it's a ginseng like all the rest. It's very helpful for adapting um, our, our organ systems to, to restore them, our energy, fatigue, all of that. If I were to compare all the ginsengs, I would put American ginseng on the more stimulating end. It's a little bit, it's not, it's not like um, heart rate stimulating, it's just more energy lifting. And then our local uh, Devil's Club is a ginseng, and that's not as energetically different. It doesn't help you with fatigue so much. It, it helps in different, different totifying ways. They're all totifying in some way. Um, we just have these affinities. American ginseng is most like Korean ginseng, and uh, and then the next one down in terms of energy support would be Siberian ginseng. But for some reason, Korea and China want this one, and we want theirs. It doesn't grow here. It doesn't grow here, but it doesn't typically grow here. It's mostly from Appalachian area, and it's highly illegal too. Illegal to dig up. It's illegal to dig up. It's that it's um, endangered because of all the yeah, it takes many, many years, but you can um, propagate by roots, and if it spikes the climate, it will grow very well not every year. So you need to have about 30 years to develop a very nice, sustainable stand. <laughs> start, start now. <laughs> okay, that's the last one.